hi there and welcome back to another episode at station road now in today's episode of course we are going to continue on with this rather extensive viaduct build and if we just quickly go back to the previous episode stage two i had begun to actually assemble one of the modular units of the viaduct and temporarily assembled it as a single unit so that you can actually see what it looks like so since then i've assembled all the other units so there were three four of those plus a couple of unique ones for each end and then assembled that all together So since the last episode the stages have kind of shifted a little bit and although I mentioned in stage two that stage three I would actually be looking at the detailing for the viaduct that hasn't actually happened but there's actually a good reason for that because as I actually started to assemble the core modular structures of the viaduct into one unit and then situate that within the layout I realized that I needed to probably actually start dealing with some of the landscaping around the viaduct before I got into any of the detailing because one of the things that you can fall into the trap with is detailing it something up absolutely beautifully and then you get into more rough and ready modeling and then you just end up starting to break any kind of detailing work that you might have done beforehand so I've decided that in this stage three it was really dealing with the landscape around the actual viaduct area and we'll actually jump into that now and go through sort of a short process of how I went about that so as you can see I've moved on a little bit further and place the viaduct so that I can now begin to sort of gauge how this hillside that's obviously running down from behind here and flowing down into this area here so originally I set up the viaduct just temporarily in place and taped the components together and this is before I completed the brickwork wrapping around the columns and it was just purely to sort of work out what is the best method for this viaduct being held together so moving on from that this is all now clamped together and I thought the best thing to do is actually to run this viaduct on its own individual baseboard because I do want to have this as a lift out section so that this viaduct can pop out at any point this can pop out at any point and this whole hillside area can also lift out as well so what I've actually done is and I'll try and lift this out is placed the viaduct on some 12 mil MDF kind of like its own base and then you'll be wondering wow this is a bit wacky going on in here this is obviously where the mainline tracks run underneath so I had to not have the baseboard continuing through here chopping off the pylons now I'm going to adjust these pylons or columns here a little bit further depending on how the hill slope works because a lot of this is going to be hidden behind the sloping hillside so what I'm also going to do is run a full length of MDF across here as the track bed and that's just going to help when it comes to ballasting and doing all the disused effects that are going to be on here I'm not going to run the risk of stuff seeping down through these joints so it's now really one unit and of course the only thing left to do really is to finish off doing these components here which will obviously sit in here and once that's done of course I can get on with the weathering and the beauty is that the whole unit can come off I can take this elsewhere and do all the weathering that I need to do on it so I'll just slot this back into place for now and sit that in there and 
I've just temporarily placed some high density foam here around the back and begun to mark out a road and this road of course is going to be the access road to this depot area so it's going to be carved from this foam and this is just the first layer because there will be further layers and then what I've got to do is actually run the hill slope in between the arches now what I'm going to do for that process is these will be individual separate blocks of high density foam in between the arches so that the viaduct still actually remains its own independent unit and before I can actually get into these arches and work that out I've really got to work out this side of the hillside and how it's actually going to work out and how the landform is going to be shaped down towards here so that's what the process is for today and you've seen me doing plenty of carving with high density foam so I'll probably actually just skip through that there's really little point but We'll come back to it when I started to carve this and also carve in the road. Now the plan is that what I intend to do is almost do this hill section like kind of like a reverse jigsaw puzzle. So we're going to cut out where the road is going to be. That's going to have its own gradient or rise running up and then the hill components either side of that road are then going to be carved separately as well but the layer will come up further so I'd imagine that there'll be at least one more layer possibly even two more layers of this high density foam as it builds up into this corner so the other component too is down in this corner here there is a tunnel entrance to produce for here and what I'm going to do is replicate the same style of tunnel entrance that I have over here so it'll be the blue brick or engineer's brick style over here and factor that in as well as this hill slopes down towards that tunnel mouth so one of the curious things that you may spot in the bottom of the frame here is a unusual round metal shape here now this is actually a mounting bracket for a pipe or possibly like a handrail pick that up from a hardware store and I'll show you that now what that is actually all about so here's this galvanized metal bracket in here and it's been recessed in and it is screwed through and it's actually screwed into this layer underneath and I'll just move this out of the way I haven't actually glued this piece in place you can see I've sort of marked out some lines where obviously we're going to have a bit of an embankment and this is all yet to be carved so there's a lot of carving to do in this area with this high density foam to start to create this sloping landform here but we'll just take that out of the way and it's all an aid of figuring out the best way to be able to lift this section out. Now, it, it is quite a large section. There's a reasonable amount of weight in it, although it's all essentially really made up of high density foam with a little bit of MDF in here for this track bed that's going to run in here. But just using the small rod with the same thread, we can screw this into here. and that's just screwed into there and with a reasonable amount of strength in it essentially I can lift this whole section out and it comes out just like that and the bracket is pretty solid so this whole section comes out using this method and originally I sort of thought of just like a cupboard handle or something like that but I just felt like there really wasn't enough support in it or strength so that is the reason behind this bracket now once you unscrew this the idea is our water tower is going to sit over the top and hide it so because I've recessed this down I'm actually going to fill in around this area so we've got a nice sort of flat flush surface here with 
the water tower over the top. So as you can see this whole area in here which is flat this is the access area for the depot and of course the road is going to run down in between this arch here and come down to this sort of flat area where obviously there's parking and so forth for maintenance vehicles and all that type of thing. So to determine the hill slope for the reverse side of this viaduct I thought the best place to start was to work out the gradient for this access road and then from that point I could then start carving the road and also working out and carving the landform itself and the gradient that the hillside will actually take. So after an awful lot of carving and a mountain of high density foam waste, unfortunately maybe not so great for the environment, we now have the landform in place and have also worked the landform on the other side of the viaduct on the front side and got the gradients in place. So it's certainly changed quite considerably and I think it's working relatively well and reasonably convincing. So if all the hill forms now carved and more or less looking the part and reasonably convincing, we'll just go through a dismantling of all of these components so that you can see how I went about actually doing these components in here, because as I mentioned, I want this viaduct to be its own independent unit so these are individual blocks set in between the arches so we'll just quickly move some of the stuff out of the way one piece of hill section there we've got our road in here and then we've got another large section of hill here And then if we quickly dismantle all of this stuff here. So we'll take our engine shed out for now. Just pop that there. And of course our handle for lifting this entire section out. And as you can see I've installed a bit of retaining wall around here. Now this was a particularly difficult area because we've got our join here for this unit and then this is part of the permanent baseboard and then we've got the viaduct. So there's just so many different components going on in this area. So if we just lift this area out and this whole piece comes out
and now you can actually see in here what I've done in between each arch so it's made up of sections of styrene to fit in between here and what I actually did and you can just sort of faintly see a line here where I've completed both sides of the hill so the hill on the reverse and the hill on the front and then slotted these blocks in here marked out the line between each edge and then of course trimmed each of these top sections of blocks to actually fit in here so the plan is obviously is these will be glued into place on this viaduct section so we'll lift out this viaduct and you should be able to get a better idea of how this all works so I'll remove this component and of course this will be a removable piece as well so the tunnel unit comes out and where are we going to put that just pop that around there and then this whole piece lifts out in one unit and that can be treated and weathered and all the scenery and so forth in between the arches can all be done independently off the baseboard so that's where we're at at the end of stage three and i think certainly conquering all of that landscaping side of things was definitely of great benefit because now I can really gauge and see how this viaduct is actually sitting within the landscape. So I think now we can safely say as part of stage four that I can really start to finish off the actual viaduct itself, finish off the remaining arches, the outer walls and actually get into a little bit of the detailing, possibly even get into a little bit of weathering. Of course on the landscape side of things of course I've got to finish off doing those small block sections in between the arches. They need to be actually anchored and glued into place and I do have to do a little bit of trimming here and there so that I can get a nicer fit with that very large section that needs to come in and out. So in terms of this kit being available I'm still going through some fine tuning on this and I've had some great feedback in the comments on particular suggestions on how to sort of deal with a few issues that I've had during the process of designing this kit. Now of course one of the key ones of course was the brick texture that although printed on an A4 sheet wouldn't completely wrap of course around one of the columns and of course it's a pretty logical choice and somebody I think possibly a couple made comment why not make the viaduct just a little bit narrower and of course that's exactly what I'm going to do if I can actually reduce the viaduct with by only 10 millimeters which is not a great deal that will actually allow a full A4 sheet of brick texture to wrap around the columns. So that's one modification I've yet to make to the actual design side of it and then I'll probably actually do another sort of dummy run with doing another one of these modular sections, trying it all out, seeing if it works. Once I've done that what I plan to do is send one of these kits in its complete form just so for one of the units and I'm going to send it off to my close friend Paul at Sandling Junction and he's going to build one for me and if he can build this and comment on any glitches issues that he might have whether he found it easy whether he found it difficult all of those kind of things then that's going to be of great help to me to sort of really fine tune it down so for those who are asking when are these kits going to be available when can I have one just a little while longer yet I do have to sort of I want to make sure it's right before I actually propose releasing this as an available kit. The other thing too that I need to factor in and some folk have obviously commented on that is freight cost because I know that a lot of you will probably be based in the UK or elsewhere in the world well how much is it going to cost in terms of shipping. Now I'm really hoping that it won't be too horrific because it will be a flat pack it's just 
going to fit into an A4 bubble wrap pack with maybe a little bit of bracing so it's not going to be some giant huge large box that needs to be sent around the world and therefore I think the freight isn't going to be too horrific so I'll leave it there for today's video I certainly hope you've gained some inspiration and ideas through the methods and concepts that I'm using here at Station Road and of course in particular for this disused viaduct so do take care everyone look after yourselves of course don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you next time bye for now